Story time. A few years ago, I bought a so-called gaming laptop, thin, light, and supposedly powerful. Thought I was getting the best of the both worlds. But in reality, it ran hot, throttle like crazy, and gaming felt like a lagging mess. And now Asus is calling this V16 a portable gaming powerhouse. But what does that actually mean? Did they finally crack the code or just slap a dedicated GPU on the VivoBook and call it a day? There's one feature on this laptop that makes it very different from most budget gaming laptops. If it works, this could be the most balanced budget gaming laptop out there. But if it doesn't work, well, we have seen how that story ends. The chassis feels plasticky, with a finish that reminded me more of what you'd expect from a laptop under price range of 60,000. The overall feel was a bit hollow, and while it's not a deal breaker, it doesn't exactly scream premium or solid construction. That said, right off the box, the V16 does execute a futuristic slick look, clearly aimed at gamers and content creators. At 1.95 kilos, it's not exactly ultra light. But considering it houses a powerful GPU and cooling system, the weight feels reasonable. And with the dimensions of 35.7 to 25.07, it manages to stay compact for a 16-inch laptop. As for the keyboard, the V16 features a chiclet keyboard with a backlighting and a numeric keypad, offering 1.5mm key travel. However, one thing I didn't quite like was the arrow keys. They felt way too cramped. They are sandwiched between the other keys, making it a bit tricky to use them comfortably. Now, when it comes to the touchpad, I was genuinely surprised. It's 40% larger than what you would typically find on a laptop of this size, and that makes a huge difference in terms of price and usability. Personally, I found it to be a super smooth for gestures, whether it was scrolling through websites or navigating through softwares. The anti-fingerprint layer keeps it feeling clean and responsive. Alright, let's talk about the ports. On the left side, you have got the DC in for charging and HDMI 2.1 port for connecting to external displays and a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C port that supports both DisplayPort output and power delivery. You also get USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A and a classic 3.5mm audio jack for your headphones or a mic. On the right side, there is just one more USB 3.2 Gen 1A port. But personally, I would like to see a second USB Type-C port as most of the devices are shifting toward that connection. By the way, this laptop was provided to us by Digital Stores Dehradun. They have dedicated HP, Lenovo, Acer and Asus stores, offering hands-on experience, better sales support, exclusive in-store deals and a friendly knowledgeable staff to guide you through different options. Contact details are in the description down below. The V16 features a 16-inch WUXGA panel with a 16x10 aspect ratio, which gives you more vertical screen real estate, great for productivity tasks like coding or processing. It also offers 300 nits of peak brightness, which is decent for indoor use and the anti-glare coating helps reduce reflections, making it easier to work in various lighting conditions. However, when we talk about the color accuracy, that's where the V16 it starts to fall short. The display covers only 45% of the NTSC color gamut, which translates to roughly 62.5% of sRGB color space. For everyday tasks like browsing, media consumption, or light gaming, this won't be a problem. The color performance is not par with some of the more specialized laptops out there. For casual use, V16 does the job. Alright, let's talk about the sound quality. The speakers, they get loud. I mean really loud. We are talking about 75 decibel at max volumes. Now let's take a closer look at the V16's performance and I will break it down in a way that's easier to understand. The V16 handles most things pretty well. In Cinebench R23, it scored a single core score of 1736 and a multi core score of 10312. This shows its capability of handling everyday tasks and even more demanding workloads like video editing and light rendering. But when you jump to the Cinebench 2024, you will notice the performance drops with a single core score of 108 and multi core score of 610. It's not bad but not mind-blowing either, especially for the newer benchmarks. For 3 d Mark Time Spy, it hits 6805, which is decent for gaming and graphic-heavy tasks, and for PC Mark 10, the score is 6142, meaning it will breeze through normal productivity tasks like browsing, email, or document editing without a hitch. Now on to the gaming. The V16 holds up pretty well for a laptop in this price range. In GTA 5, it's clocked to 123 FPS on very high settings. That's smooth and more than playable for fun sessions. Valorant, a competitive shooter runs at super smooth 245 fps on the high settings. In CS2, you are looking at 102 fps on very high settings, again, totally smooth. RDR2 is a bit more demanding, but it still holds up 50 fps without DLSS. But turning on DLSS quality mode bumps up to 66 fps. In Far Cry 6, it runs to 78 fps on ultra setting. 
nothing insane, but it's still solid for a laptop in this category. I ran some AI tests using the DeepSeek Quen Distilled 7B model in the LM Studio, testing how the V16 handled different prompt lengths. For a 21 token prompt, it took 38.04 seconds to process. It's short prompt, but you will start to see some lag. Next, I tried a 78 token prompt and the time jumped to 1 minute 40 seconds. That's noticeable delay for sure. I also tested a 37 token prompt which took 56 seconds and for a super short 7 token prompt, it took 5.61 seconds. It's not quick as a dedicated workstation or a higher end systems but for a laptop in this class, it's doing okay. If you're dealing with the light AI task or smaller models, it will do the job. When we really pushed this laptop with some heavy duty 4K 10 bit video editing, things got toasty. The CPU shot up to a spicy 97 degrees Celsius and the GPU wasn't far behind at 80 degrees Celsius. Definitely feeling the burn there. Jumping into the GTA 5 on high settings, the CPU stayed at 95 degrees Celsius. While the GPU was a bit more manageable at 72 degrees Celsius, running Prime 95, the CPU maxed out at a concerning 93 degrees Celsius, really showing how much heat it can generate. Meanwhile, for Mark's GPU stress test pushed the GPU to 70 degrees Celsius. Not terrible, but definitely worth noting. Let's talk about the upgradability. RAM, you can take up to 64 gigs, which is really great if you need more memory down the line. Storage, expendable up to 2TB. But here's the catch, there's only a 1 SSD slot. So if you want more storage, you won't be able to add another drive. The V16 is kinda average for gaming, but when it comes to the productivity and AI related tasks, it's an absolute beast because of that Ultra 7240H CP that comes with the neural processing unit. It's clear this laptop strikes a perfect balance between performance and portability, but with an issue of thermal throttling. If you pick wisely, you can get a solid options without overspending a huge sum of money. If this review had, make sure to hit that like button. It only takes a second, but it goes really a long way. And if you are planning to buy this laptop, check out the links down below in the description box. These are affiliate links, so if you use them, you will get the best deals and it will also support the channel with no extra cost to you. Thanks for watching, stay awesome and as always keep vibing and I will see you in the next one.